WWE 2K22 has been out for some time, and I thought we could take some time today together to go through and revisit the game, review it a little bit more, from gameplay to patches to DLC, all of it, and let you know what we think about it in its current form and its current state. Let's have some fun on the show, let's go. So we'll do our best today to go high level across the board for WWE 2K22. By the way, welcome to Assemble, I'm Matt. Good to see you, great to have you on the show today. Can't believe it's actually been three months since the game came out. It feels like it's been like a lot longer than it has, but I do a, I do a lot of content here, so it's, it's a lot. Let's kick things off by talking about GM mode. When GM mode was announced, then came out, super excited for it. Going back to the days of SmackDown vs. Raw, I was really, really anticipating something cool that would just grab me and bring me in and be playing it just religiously. And just, I, my GM, it just has, it hasn't done that for me. Now, since all the patches, we have seen some updates to my GM. I wasn't having a ton of problems with my GM upon launch up until now. It's been steady. It works fine. I like that they added the tag team titles in there because they were missing from when the game first launched and they've improved some stability as well. But my GM, I think it's just kind of there. It's fun. I want to play more of it. I hope they add things like mid card titles to the mode because I think that's an easy thing they could slot in. When I do get in there and I play several weeks of it, I enjoy it. But what I feel I don't enjoy as much is the way they have structured the rivalries in the mode. You're trying to mix and match the roster. So the matchups are not based off of you wanting to create cool moments, cool matches and story beats in your MyGM, but rather having a giant take on a cruiserweight because that's going to give you the most stars. MyGM, I think, is a great addition to the game. I hope they continue to keep it there and they evolve it over the next couple of years because I like to see things like the budget increase. I'd like to see maybe some storylines being able to add in there. But I am glad it's there. I wouldn't have taken it away. I think that they they talked about it so much in previews and then when it was released, it was hyped up quite a bit by all of us, including myself, that we were hoping this would be a, a revisit to days of old. And it doesn't quite hit. It's a little bit on the dry side, but I do enjoy the mode overall and I hope they can add more. And I hope and I'm feeling optimistic that this year we will see some more patches and more updates to my GM mode. OK, let's look at my faction. Now, this mode, nah, it's, it's, that's it's again, it's it's OK. It's all right. I enjoy my faction. I will give it some credit. I'm not trying to just dog on everything here. I enjoy it. At first glance, when I first played the game, I did not jump into my faction at all. I really wasn't that keen on playing a card game, card collecting game that I felt like should have been saved for mobile. We've had the My Rise characters locked behind there. There's a lot that wasn't great about it. In fact, I've done a review on my faction to tell you about the goods and the bads of it. But as I sit here now, three months later, I can see that 2K is consistently adding more to the weekly towers. They are adding more card packs. Things like DX have been in there. There are are enough reasons for me to go back in and check in on a daily basis to be able to unlock daily rewards, daily ch And I do enjoy playing the weekly towers, being able to go through and just hit those because it changes things up. Not always wanting to go into universe mode or just play exhibition. I do spend a couple of hours every single week playing my faction, clearing out weekly towers and trying to do some of the faction wars. There's still room to improve in there. And one of the big things that a lot of us will critique is not having the my faction alternate attires, superstars made ready available in exhibition. This is a big bone of contention for everybody, including myself. If 2K made those available, I think we'd be a lot happier. We'll see what they do with the mode as they evolve it. But clearly, because Supercard is such a massive success for 2K, for WWE themselves, they wanted to be able to incorporate that into their console game. So it's providing a good variety, right? So far from my GM to my faction, you're kind of hitting on a multiple things for different fans to be able to enjoy. And the other one is the classic returning favorite of universe mode. Still play universe mode on a daily basis, setting up new seasons for myself, setting up my AEW roster, classic attitude era, or trying to play along with a modern era. I still really do enjoy universe mode, but it does still have a lot of problems with it just in terms of its stability. Game crashing, and it's not just myself, but so many people in the community talking about how the game still crashes. Loading up money in the bank in universe mode crashes the game. 
custom arenas do it too. Having duplicate superstars show up on your weekly shows. They have been patching it, which is a great sign, but I feel like the next patch, whenever that does come out, because we're seven deep in it already, I think the next big patch that they do really needs to address a lot in universe mode. It has been the same mode consistently year after year, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I would like to see them bring back promos because we lost the promos this year, which I think is a big miss. And for the community, I think a lot of you have mentioned how you wish promos were still added in the game because it is another layer and it's another element they can utilize. It keeps things more engaging in your season. So more cutscenes, promos, and the stability factor, I think need to be addressed. It's not a huge diversions from the years of old for universe mode and where we were from launch week to now with universe. I will speak that just on my end, I find it is stable. It's better than when it launched 100%. They seem to be addressing some of the issues with it, but I think universe is still outstanding in terms of being able to say that it is great and it's been refined. I hope that the next couple of patches address stuff for it. The showcase mode for Rey Mysterio showcase, it was enjoyable. Probably one of the highlights for me for the game when it first came out, I was dabbling it a little bit and then I went hard into showcase mode and cleared it out. That's what he said, right? guys not overly difficult i enjoyed the transitions they did from the actual matches to going into the gameplay itself they did a really good job here they're highlighting a lot of Rey mysterious story some of his favorite matches i'm a little torn on them keeping superstars and arenas and titles all behind showcase mode i'm not sure if i like that because on one hand i like that you have something that you are striving for specifically in showcase mode to complete so i am getting those arenas i am getting Shawn michaels i am getting jbl in there but on the other side of it if you're getting the season pass and you're getting boost packs and you're unlocking everything to me technically you should have everything unlocked because one of the downsides was for example Shawn Michaels was locked behind showcase mode you had to finish that match to get HBK in the game which just seems like an odd choice to make they could have done it where it was just the alternate attires for HBK and alternate attires for superstars were locked to showcase mode, but locking specific stars, I'm a little torn, what do you think? But overall, I did enjoy showcase mode. I hope that they continue this way of doing it for future showcase modes. If next year we get a Triple H showcase mode, Game of Games, King of Kings, or a Randy Orton showcase, I think they have a good formula here that they could work on. I do wish though that they did increase the amount of matches we had. Good amount, but I wanted more, and that's actually a good sign too. My Rise, I am still playing My Rise. Not a huge fan favorite for me personally. There's some entertaining dialogue in there and entertaining moments. I wish that we could export and import our custom created superstar into My Rise. We can't do that, so that's a downside. I think for a lot of people, My Rise, the thing that it's lacking is the stability. 2K keeps addressing this with a lot of the patches, but I think a lot of feedback for what I hear in the community as well as on Twitter is that My Rise still has problems where it's crashing. So we've seen patches come out along the way that have been addressing a lot of this, but from the time the game came out till now, I'm dabbling in and playing a little bit of My Rise, but it's not my favorite thing to do. I think it's also interesting when we talked about previous episodes of the amount of content that they've had to switch around, speaking specifically to the Bray Wyatt content that was pulled from the game and they had to essentially scramble to put in different content in there to pad everything out. I would have been curious to know what the original plan and look and feel for My Rise was going to be. I do like working through the Performance Center. I like that you graduate through there and you are having different feuds. So there is a good progression with My Rise. I will say overall, enjoying My Rise. Okay, to bucket the next little chunk here, everybody, let's talk a little briefly just about, you know, matches and customization in general. I'm playing a lot of exhibition. A lot of my time is just having straight up exhibition matches because I am enjoying the overall gameplay of the game. Some of the entrances are really, really well done. You're getting a little bit of a camera shake for the entrances for different superstars. Some of the models look really good and they have improved things like the Trons, the lighting a little bit, some of the hair physics as well for certain superstars. The controls when we first played them, when the game first came out, wasn't too sure if I liked it or not. The years of 2K19 and having that control scheme is what I have been used to. Wasn't sure about combos, but as I have played it for several months, it's second nature. I do like the control scheme. I am not crazy on combos. I don't feel like it needs to be there, to be honest. The stamina meter is good, but I think it can still be refined and be tweaked a little bit more. 
having that stun meter too and the stunned effect of the red glowing on the screen, I wish that they would patch in an option to be able to turn that on or off because I don't always need to have a big red glowy screen going around. It feels a little bit too arcadey, so I wish we had the options there to leave it on or off. But controls and gameplay, really enjoy it. Yes, there's still issues where I will throw somebody into the ropes and they just they just run forever. But the recent patches that we have seen have addressed a lot of this. Some stuff got taken out and, and messed with and some stuff got fixed patches later. A few things that are still omitted from all of this that we're waiting to see if it will happen. Double title entrances are still not there. Double title matches are not in the game. They were at launch and then they patched them out for some reason. So there is hope that we will see these things get patched and fixed later on. But yeah, straight up one on one matches, straight up exhibition play is still my favorite. Getting into community creations, downloading arenas and shows from the community are amazing. And so moment to moment gameplay and even the camera itself, when the game first came out, it was very jarring because we're so used to something different. I personally, I enjoy that it is a little bit closer to the action. Unfortunately, one of the downsides for this game is that we don't have any brand new match types. They stuck with what we have seen in the past and they added nothing new in there, which is a bummer. Not even a special guest referee match, which would have really, really played well for the community and for the audience that have been clamoring for new match types. That's just one of them that I feel like they could have added into the game. And the last thing we'll talk about here today on the show is going to be just creation suite overall, right? It's really detailed. There is a lot of great options in there. The community and the creation community is really great. They do a really good job of customizing other characters, your AEW rosters, the different versions of CM Punk that I have seen that I played with, John Moxley, Cody Rhodes. There are some really great creations out there. And with all the patches that we've seen over the last three months, to me, it has improved. It's more stable. I wish that they would improve the amount of downloadable slots that we have for renders for our community creations. 100 slots is not enough for people. Over the last three months, they had changed the rendered image size. I think rendered images is a great, great addition that they have had. I was on board with it as soon as we heard about it and we saw it for the first time. They've gone in and they patched it so the sizing was different. So that was an issue for a lot of people as they were trying to upload and they had all of these custom renders and then 2K patched and changed the sizing of it. And then we have to re-download everything all over again. Still not a perfect mode when it comes to creations as we have seen things being patched in, patched out, different hairstyles have come and gone. Community creation still does crash time and again when I am trying to search or I am trying to download something. I think the search functionality overall could be improved a little bit. I think that they need to curate content a little bit better because you're gonna get some, just some, just some nasty stuff posted on there, don't you? And with online matches and lobbies, through the patches that we have seen, things are a little bit more stable, still issues with crashes, but based off my experience and the experience and feedback from the community and from people online that I've seen posting, online matches are moving in the right direction. They are getting better. Oh, and I almost forgot to talk about DLC, the season pass. We have other episodes talking about, is it worth it? Each DLC pack, if they're worth it, if they're worth it to you, it's hit and miss. We have the Nash Carter DLC situation that's coming up where Nash Carter was removed from the upcoming DLC. In its place, we are getting two Evo cards for my faction, which is kind of a bummer for a lot of us. It's not really one-to-one -one of what we would want. I think 2K could do more when it comes to DLC by giving us more downloadable content for things like specific arenas, the latest WrestleMania arena. They did add NXT 2.0 after the game came out. That is a huge win on them. And that was done through a patch and not through the DLC. I like to see them do more of that when it comes to downloadable content, patches, and future content that they could do even in this calendar year with the game. So three months later, two DLC packs have come out. We got a third one on the way, seven patches addressing issues left and right. How has the last three months of the game been for you? That's the big question. Let me know. And if you guys enjoy this episode, check out this one right here, talking more WWE 2K22. And I got more news for you coming this week. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Seriously, thank you all. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking the channel, all that good stuff. And I'll see you on the next episode.